as long as that was
provide good service and sound decisions for the citizens of this country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
for our, our region, which is in Sacramento, which kind of touches Yolo County line, goes all the way up, touches the of G, and we've got a number of um, diverse group that's volunteered to serve on the steering committee. So Supervisor Gallagher from Sutter and I are kind of leading that charge along with Louis Bear from Party of Way and Max Scott from the 1500 over on the Sutter side. So we're uh, getting more. Last Tuesday, I uh, attended the North Central County Authority meeting in the city. Um, we governed uh, overlooked the one stops in the Sioux and Sutter and Glen Inclusive counties. Um, pretty uneventful. And then I attended the Kittles uh, duck calling contest. They had about 400 people. It was really good for city police. A lot of people came on the back. So, a lot of new people. So, it was fun. <laughs> Then, um, I attended the BRAC meeting, the Resource Advisory Council for Glen Cusa on Monday, last Monday, and it blows. Um, got 20 something dollars that I for Cusa County to spend on projects, had two projects both come forward. Um, they kept it running just to see if there's any more. Then went to Sacramento and met with the regional forester on Wednesday. Um, had some discussions with regards to the fires. Uh, he was having the chief um, out that afternoon with the chip fire and went on after some rumor that the National uh, Guard was going over the fire, so I don't know if that was a fact or not. Uh, you know, that's, that's interesting you should mention that, Gary, because uh, this weekend from Williams there was a busload of the National Guard people going through uh, and they said it was a fire, so. Five. 
All right, that's my vote. I see the sheriff, jail, consider authorizing a limited term correctional officer position effective October 1st, uh, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. The department currently has a vacant correctional corporal position and they're requesting to undergo the correctional corporal position with a limited term position of correctional officer to cover staffing for the short term and they eventually promote a correctional officer to fill the vacant correctional corporal position. Moved by Weaver. Second. Second by Carter. <coughs> Roll Supervisors from Aye. Carter. Aye. Dan. Aye. Marshall. Aye. And Ed. Aye. That's 5 0. Behavioral Health Services and Mental Health consider authorizing an exit health clerical position temporary part time effective September 1st, 2012. The department currently has several of their front office staff on a certain leave of absences and they are requesting extra help to cover staff shortages. So move. Move by Carter. Second. Second by Carter. Roll call. Supervisors from Murray? Aye. Carter? And Van? Marshall? Aye. And Evans? Aye. That's 5 0. Thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, may I please go back to the sheriff um, on item C and correct the date October 1st, 2012 to June 30th, 2013, please? We, we did that. I read that into it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, let's talk about the things that we're doing for a long year. How about the budgetary, budgetary matters? Any comments from the bench here? Yes. Budgetary matters are for Robert. I don't know if there was a rumor we were going to get started on the budget conference. Well, um, Code states that you have to have at least a preliminary budget posted in the paper by September 8th for public. Um, and I would simply suggest that after that we have to have something in there. So depending on how you guys have a question you want to make, you want to do something in there that. Otherwise, I'll feel like we have to have We'll do it together after the meeting. Okay, 915. The sheriff, consider approving your request from the Bureau of Reclamation to weigh in with this kind of ordinance number 67 <coughs> and ordinance revoking ordinances 6 or 476, 477, and 609 in the sections 14 8.5 and 14 17 of the county code and substituting new section 14 17 to the county code regarding miscellaneous offenses on East Park Reservoir property for the 2010, 2011, and 2012 hunting seasons for the purpose of game management. Good morning, Mark. Uh, the LBC and the Sheriff's Department uh, appearing on behalf of the Sheriff Jane Maxson. Uh, this is a contract that uh, we did previously and at the request of the Bureau of uh, Reclamation for the hunting season of uh, 13, 14, and 15. Um, because our ordinance is our ban virtually everything, you know, when you take yes. to have the ability to have the left. <coughs>
further award bid for same authorized share of purchase to be done. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Moved by a van, second by a marshal to accept the bids. Roll call. Supervisors and jury? Aye. 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 Aye.
consider accepting certification pursuant to election code section 10515 of the county where party November 6, 2012 general election. And this is just uh, business as usual for the November <coughs> general election. This just tells you at the close of the filing period uh, what offices would go to an election and what offices. We only have one that's going to need an appointment. Um, for Maxwell Public Utility District, there was one seat on the field. We contacted them and uh, hopefully we'll get a recommendation from them. And then, of course, uh, there are several that are going to election. Uh, these are the ones that have the same number filled as were uh, needed to be filled and won't be going to election. Thank the board. So, by party, second by name in the discussion. Roll call. Supervisor Sanjuri? Aye. Carter? Aye. Van? Marshall? Aye. And Pat? Aye. Pass by no item C. Consider adopting a resolution of the Board of Supervisors of Blues County State of California appointing nominees to the Office of Director of their respective districts and authorize the chairman to sign. And this kind of goes along with the previous item. Um, we kind of jump the gun on it. Usually we have to wait and get letters from the districts, but because we only have one that was unfilled, we would only have to wait for that one. So we went ahead and appointed it, have everyone else on board so that they know they're going to take office that first week in December, and we'll just come back to you with that, with a resolution for the one appointment when it comes in from Maxwell. So. Moved by Carter. Second by Andrea. Question? Roll call. Supervisors and jury? Aye. Carter? Aye. Van? Marshall? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. 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 Thanks, Ken.
the receipt for the purchase of the gift card and the receipt for what was purchased on the gift card. So can we purchase gift cards on the shop card right then? No. I, that's where I'm getting Well, no, well, well that was, about. I was told this subsequently though. Okay. So this, I mean, this is, Peggy sent me an email on, I believe it was Thursday or Friday. So, but I, we, our agency did provide receipts for everything that was purchased to the audit. Your staff never received the Cal card in time to do what that's they right. could have done with the Cal card. Exactly. exactly. So that, that's a little pick up there. But they, would they have been buying a gift certificate or would they have been? They would have been purchasing the higher right thing to write out of their route, like, yes, for the yes. client. Right. But we did that I go shopping with the, with the, the families. Because <laughs> that was the only one. But I think it's been resolved. My understanding is that staff um, were notified last week when they could pick up their car cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and okay. how long ago did they have the training? It was in June. Yeah, uh, yeah it was June 27th. Were you the recent one started? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Peggy requested the Cal cards for those people, and we got an email the other day from Bonnie saying we still have to see this. Where do they come from? Uh, like, there's in Minnesota or? I honestly don't know which branch of Tennessee. Probably an online application. But it shouldn't be any future occurrences of this. Okay. okay. And then the policy for in lunches or out, in county lunches versus out of county lunches, is that then clarified to everybody? Well, I hope so. I mean, I just saw the Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning, Chair, board members. Um, <clears throat> this item is for uh, leasing space for a day reporting center for the AB 109 and SB 678 adult probationers. Uh, we want to enter into a, a joint uh, adventure with uh, our partners, behavior health care, uh, health care services, education, and one stop to have a one stop shop for these folks to come get services in a non threatening atmosphere. Uh, many counties around here are doing this. If you'll recall back when the original uh, CCP uh, Community Corrections Partnership in 2011 on the realignment plan, your board approved the uh, realignment plan when Chief Gordon was here. In that realignment plan on page six, I had copies if you'd like. It talked about moving forward with the day reporting center. We are in a position now to go ahead and do that so that as the um, ones that come straight to probation, the post-release community supervision folks, and or the ones that come out of the jail will go to this and get services, whether it be domestic violence, anger management, uh, trying to get a job, counseling services, whatever, in hopes that we can reduce recidivism and keep them from going back into jail, which will be a big cost savings. Yeah. What's that? Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Is the current resource center participating um, in this since you're looking for job training? Um, the one stop. Yes, sorry. Yes. I, I thought the old name. Yeah, Laura is, is going to be participating as well. What was the total um, budget allocation from the state for us for 109? 109 was 432,059 dollars, and SB 678 was 221,662. So combined, we had about 653,721, I believe. Does the CCCP have a, a budget set out? We have a budget that we approved, and it's in uh, the new plan that we're waiting for uh, your divorce approval for uh, this fiscal uh, year. And, and this is in, in that plan. In that plan, okay. And since we haven't approved it, would you mind just forwarding that solo to me, um, just the CCP budget for our scare societies? Mr. Fenton and I had a discussion about this uh, issue yesterday. And uh, I had concerns over yet the county uh, renting yet another space when we have so many uh, collaborative departments working on this. Why these people couldn't report to the probation office, the office of education, someplace other than renting a new space? Mr. Fenton, would you elaborate on that, please? Um, basically, I know in least probation department, we don't have any room to run groups. This would be an all day ongoing and after hours uh, space for running groups and individual counseling for these folks. And again, the whole idea is, my understanding is most of the departments that we're collaborating with are pretty tight too, to be able to have those groups ongoing where these folks will come in, drop into a non-threatening environment, i.e. not going through metal detectors or that type of thing, and, and being able to work with them individually and or in group sessions. So. We felt, and that was the CCP felt, uh, that this would be the best environment. Again, it's working in other counties. Butte has it going right now. Uh, Nevada has it going right now. Napa has it going. Uh, Tama is putting one up as we speak, and we're trying to move forward in that same model because if they are working. Merced has one for, it's actually had one before. It be one of mine was passed for 678. And it's working very well because of the folks are coming in where they don't feel they're just going to get arrested if they mess up or anything like that by probation and taken into custody. So space-wise, I haven't been able to find anything that would work as well. We looked at several options throughout the county, and this was the best and, 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 the, and the most reasonable for 700 a month. I mean, I don't want to show my right neck too bad here. <laughs> but, but the answer to me is don't mess up. And yeah. if, if you mess up, you should get arrested. And giving them a huggy feely place that, that is non threatening, uh, are we opening ourselves up to those guys walking in with guns and knives? And, and if you're going to be back and forth saying, well, I need a bulletproof window for them to check into. And no, no. The whole idea really is, and if it's in line with realignment, whether we all agree with realignment or don't agree, whether that's another story. But the idea is, is to try to get them to rehabilitate, to keep them out of jail, which will cost us a lot more, especially with our own jail, 
and also minimize our, our litigation. I mean, the whole reason the state got really into realignment, in my thinking at least, is because they had so many lawsuits. I want to try to help work with the sheriff to keep those folks from out of jail. If we keep them out of jail, it will minimize any kind of litigation will come to the county, which these folks are notoriously litigation-oriented. And also, if we can keep them getting domestic violence treatment, if we can get them drug alcohol treatment to the partners, then I think, and we can help get them jobs, hopefully we can keep them out, whatever that percentage is. We've done a better job so far to date. It's not great, and, and we're still learning, if you will, ways to deal with the post-release community supervision folks and the 1170Hs that come out of jail, which we just had a couple, but it, it's better than just putting them back on the street and having no services for them, which right now we're doing kind of patchwork, if you will. This will kind of solidify and bring it all together. Don't misunderstand. I'm not opposed to giving them services and helping them succeed in, in, the, in environments that the rest of us live in. I am opposed of not making them accountable. And if they think they're not being made accountable because they go to a separate place where they're not going to be made accountable, I am opposed to that. Well, that's why we have a probation officer that will be there to help keep them accountable, along with uh, a, a social worker, a, a therapist, uh, somebody to do education from a case virgin shop, and uh, somebody from, to help them with the, the vocational piece from one stop. So. I mean, the idea is to keep them accountable, keep, but have where they go one place rather than having to go to my shop, go over to uh, there if they need medical turned on, go over to his place to get there because they don't tend to not always go to the next place. If you can get them in one place and get everything done, I think you've got a better chance of working with them. And that model has worked in other counties. So, okay, so, so you help me understand here. We're going to have to hire people to have somebody from Elizabeth's office there, somebody from your office there, somebody from Case Bridgen's office there, somebody from Bill Cornelius's office there, because we don't want them to go to the different offices. Is that what no, you're saying? I think, we, as I understand it from my partners, is they're doing it with people they already have in house or that are paid for out of other grants. We're doing it with, with the probation system we currently have right now. It's just that we don't have the one place they can come to and, and run the groups and everything. So, no, we're not going to be hiring more people specifically for this. Now, I, I don't believe AB 109 is going to fund everything we're going to be required to provide. And there's going to be a general fund impact. And you haven't been here a long time, but you'll, you'll soon find that at least I, and I can't speak to the rest of my counterpart, uh, bigger government is not necessarily what we want to see. I mean, I can only tell you that, that this is trying to reduce the cost to the county. I, I personally believe that if we keep them out of jail, which is extremely costly, and the litigation, that alone will help, as well as keeping the public safe by having them in groups and in therapy to try to get them from recidivating. And again, it's working in other counties. It's the best I can tell you at this point. No, I'm, we not done opposed, yet. I'm not opposed to the program. I just don't think we need to rent another facility to accommodate these people. Uh, one other question, and maybe John, you can help me with this. Who is Sierra Pacific Management? Who's the people behind it? I think it's Century 21. Century 21. Century 21 owns this? Okay. No. Okay. Okay. They're managing it. Who owns the building? Oh, I can't take it. There's three, three guys in the first check that I wanted. Okay. I, I, I was just going to Right. I was right. just confused as to the language. This is where first five was, right? Right. 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 I was actually using the language. Same office as first five. First person. Right. 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 Oh. But it's not going to be worth this person. No. First five. Right. Right. It's for first five. Same office. Okay. Well, I have two questions. I know I've asked this before, and I asked this when we had the meeting with the state. Has there been any determination that if they are technically considered parolees, do they or do they not qualify for the Medi-Cal Medicare? Because this was left open-ended in this last discussion where we were going to actually have to pick up some of that cost because technically if they were parolees, they did not qualify. Or if they were, because the way the code was written, when the state was the code, it didn't technically classify them as parolees, therefore they did not qualify. 
for those, which again, you know, state very, very crafty in how they worded that so that these financial hits would be upon the county and not the state for the first place to advise. Well, what's currently in place is that um, those parolees are not eligible for Medi-Cal, but they are eligible for PAPS Health, which is a, um, a subsidy of CMSP, um, which um, the county doesn't pick that up, actually. Our agency does. Um, I don't anticipate, I mean, what are our numbers currently for the um, 8109 Well, I, 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 I'm more asking, has that issue been fixed, clarified, addressed? Or? What they did is they put it under the Path to Health, the new health initiative. They checked it into that so they can get benefits through that way. So they it's, through the health, it's benefits. through the health exchange. Right. They, so that's not formalized either, though. So that could change any moment. Well, well. I so said, right now they're throwing it under the health exchange. Right. And so I said that. 